If you're just starting investing, I've got a simple strategy you can use to grow your portfolio to $1,000 in just one year. In this video, I'll give you a 12 month plan to start investing from how much to deposit each and every month to learning how to find the best investments. We're talking how to start investing in 2020 today on Let's Talk Money. Beat Day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, Nation, we did a poll a few months back in the community tab on this channel and I was floored by the answers. I asked how long you've been investing in stocks because I wanted to get a feel for where everyone is at in terms of experience and, and what videos you need to see to be successful. Over 250 of the 1400 to take that poll, about one in five said they hadn't started investing yet and about half of our growing community has been investing for less than a year. I love touching base like that with everyone here in the nation and this video is coming right out of those results. In this video, I'm gonna take you from zero to a thousand dollar portfolio, show you how to get started and give you everything you need to meet your financial dreams. Now we'll look at a month by month plan for different types of investments. I'm gonna show you how much to deposit to grow that portfolio, but without having to skimp and save every penny. By the time you're done, at the end of the year, you're gonna have a thousand dollar portfolio and just look at this graphic for what that can mean. If you never invested anything else, that thousand dollars can grow to over 20 times your money in 40 years. But creating that habit of saving and investing, like I'm going to show you how to do, and it's going to be so easy to keep adding a thousand dollars every year. Do that and you'll have over $280,000 for your retirement, turning less than $85 a month into $300,000. So let's get started because I'm excited to share this strategy and show you what it can mean for everyone here in the nation that wants to get started investing. Now, if you're not investing yet and you're worried about finding the money to get started, I put together a monthly plan for how much to invest. You see here, we're starting low at just $50 in that first month. So maybe go out to eat one last time or whatever you need to do. I want you to make that commitment and get $50 into your investment account. After that first month, we're going to increase it very gradually so you're not stretching to pay the bills or just enjoy your money. We're slowly creating that habit of finding a little bit more money to invest up until we get to that $100 a month. That is all you need to grow your portfolio to over $1,000 in one year. In fact, you really only need to invest an average of $80 a month and then compound interest is going to take care of the rest. We're starting slower here because I want to get you into that habit of investing and just not skimping to find the money. That's one of the biggest problems, especially with new investors, is that they get excited to start investing and, and then they dump every spare penny into their account. What happens though is then an unexpected bill comes up or they forget to budget for vacation or something and they end up having to take their money out of their investments. I don't want you to do that. I want you to start small, work up to what you can invest comfortably and keep your money growing for you. Now I want to give you that month by month plan for investing your money. Uh, and I think I might actually make this into two videos because it's going to be a lot to cover. We'll walk through adding a new investment each month. I'll show you why each of these should be in your portfolio, how to find the best investments and where to look. I'll also be including links to videos covering each investment in the description below so you can learn more about each topic. So January is a pretty easy month here, uh, just depositing $50, but this is going to be a huge opportunity, not just in what we're going to be looking at for investments, but in getting you started investing. Now, one of the most well-known market trends, the January effect is where the market and especially a lot of the lagging stocks from the previous year tend to rise during that month. Besides just general optimism for the new year, uh, new investors coming into the market, all these factors are pushing stocks higher and a lot of investors look for those last year's losers to play the turnaround theme. So while you're looking in your, for your first stocks to put in your portfolio in January, I'd recommend looking for value stocks. Now that's shares of companies that are trading below their fair value. Maybe a return lagged the market last year for some reason. For that, we're going to be looking for stocks that meet three criteria. First is for a valuation metric like the price to earnings or, or price to sales that's lower than competitors. We also want to find stocks with sales that are increasing on a year over year basis for at least the last couple of years and a lower debt to equity ratio than its peers. With these three criteria, you're not only finding stocks that trade more cheaply than, than others, but also that have a solid business trajectory. A lot of value stocks are cheap for a reason, like sales or earnings are on a downward slide. By screening for companies with improving sales and a lower debt to equity ratio, which, which means they're going to have more financial flexibility than their peers, 
then you're going to be finding those stocks, those value stocks with rebound potential. Now that's January and remember I'm linking to a video in the description below to give you more detail on exactly how I find those value stocks along with the other videos for each month in our plan. I also want to note though that you want to be using a commission free investing site if you're going to be using this plan. You're going to be buying stocks each month and with smaller amounts so you don't want any of that going to fees. Now I'd recommend M1 Finance, one of the platforms that I use, not only for that commission free investing, but also for the easy portfolio investing tool. Basically with M1, you put all of your stocks that you want to buy in your portfolio, then turn on this auto invest tool and that site is going to automatically spread any new deposits across all of your investments. This is a really simple way to invest across your entire portfolio, all your investments and not have to do it yourself every time you deposit money. So look for that link to M1 Finance in the description below as well. Now for February, you're going to be taking that $55 and start adding some of those dividend stocks. Now everyone out there in the nation knows I'm a huge fan of dividends. We set up our 2019 stock market challenge with 10 dividend stocks and ended up beating the market with almost a 30% return on the year. Dividend stocks just tend to beat the market. You know, from being able to reinvest that cash flow to a return that's always positive no matter where stock prices go, you have got to have some dividend stocks in your portfolio. Now, one of the strategies I talk about in the video, I'll link below, is investing in what's called the dividend aristocrats. Now, these are companies in the S&P 500, so the largest companies in the United States that have increased their dividend payout for at least 25 consecutive years. This is the easiest way to invest in dividends and a pretty darn good strategy as well. You don't have to look through company financial statements. There's no analysis to do. You know these are solid companies just on that spectacular ability to increase cash flow they pay to shareholders every single year. The easiest way to invest in these aristocrats is through the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats Fund. That's ticker NOBL. Right now, it's got shares of 57 companies that meet that dividend criteria, spread across different sectors of the economy and some solid companies here like Target, AT&T, and Procter & Gamble. In March, we increased that deposit again to $65 and start looking at another investment favorite of mine, real estate investing. There is just something about owning a real piece of land, a physical building that produces cash flow every single month. No other asset has created as much legacy wealth as real estate. But I know that direct ownership isn't for everyone. You, you're constantly managing your properties. It could cost tens of thousands of dollars minimum just for that one down payment. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the next best thing, maybe even a better way to invest in real estate than those rentals you always hear about. A real estate investment trust or a REIT is a special type of company that owns real estate and then gets a special tax break for passing the majority of the profits onto investors. So REITs are not only a super efficient way to managing property because you don't get that corporate tax drag that you get with other stocks and other companies, it's also an easy way for regular investors to diversify your portfolio. Whether you've got that first residential property or you're saving it for your first investment, REITs are going to give you the, the opportunity to invest in different property types and in every region of the United States. And if you want to talk about returns, even through the worst real estate crash in US history, REITs have outperformed stocks. Here I took data from the National Association of REITs Equity REIT Index, the blue line here versus the S&P 500 index in red. Over 30 years to 2017, the total return on REITs is 10% a year versus a return just over 7% annualized for stocks. For this real estate portion of your portfolio, you can buy individual REITs or just go with the Vanguard REIT Fund, ticker VNQ, which holds shares of 184 individual REITs in different property types and has produced a 13% annual return over the last decade. Now, if you're going to invest in individual REITs, make sure you get at least two or three companies specializing in different property types. So maybe you look for a company that holds office property, one in the hotel and leisure space, and, and maybe one in healthcare properties. This is going to give you some diversification and smooth out those real estate returns. April, we bumped the deposit up to $80 and look at another popular segment of the market, tech stocks. By now you've got a few months in saving and investing and the idea is that you can increase your deposit without having to skimp. By gradually increasing the amount you deposit every single month, I want you to find where you're comfortable at, uh, how much you can save without sacrificing too much of your fund. And what better time to increase your deposit than a month you're looking at tech stocks. Now, the tech group is an investor favorite and for pretty damn good reasons. Tech stocks shown here with the select sector fund ticker XLK in green have easily beaten the rest of the market over the past decade. Tech stocks have produced an annual return of 15% over the last 10 years versus that 10% annual return on the S&P 500 market index. Now those kinds of returns and that kind of growth that you see with tech companies can mean some very expensive stocks. 
For example, as I researched this video, shares of Netflix trade for a price of 100 times the company's profits over the last year. That's four times as expensive as shares of Disney trading for 25 times earnings. So when I look for tech stocks, I like to look for what's called growth at a reasonable price, or GARP for short. Now here, instead of just looking at that price to earnings ratio, which is that measure of how expensive a stock is, I would look at that price to earnings to growth or the PEG ratio. Now this takes the price to earnings ratio and divides by the earnings growth rate to get an idea of, of really how much investors are paying for that faster growth. Now there are other things you wanna consider when picking tech stocks, like maybe a competitive advantage through patent protected assets, but this one screen, investing in stocks with a low PEG ratio has been shown in a study by Morgan Stanley to outperform the S&P 500. You're gonna keep that same $80 deposit level in May and start two months of looking to invest in safety stocks and bonds for your portfolio. The reason safety stocks are important is because May tends to be the start of a negative summer season for stocks. On stock market data from 1950 to 2012, the only four months to average negative returns for investors are between May through September. In fact, there's even a maxim, sell in May and go away. You know, some investors or traders will just sell much of their stock portfolio in May, just not have to worry about it during the summer. Of course, those bad months don't happen every single year, but it's surprisingly accurate. I took annual data from 1950 to 2012 to create this chart that shows three investing strategies. The far left is holding stocks only in that six months, May through October period, so the returns each year from only those months. The middle four columns shows the effect of holding stocks for the other six months, that November through April period, and this is the returns for those six months. Now, and these last three columns on the right show a $10,000 portfolio started in 1950 and held all the way through the entire 62 years. And the results speak for themselves. If you had only invested each year during that May through October period, you would have a negative annual return of 1.2%. You would have actually lost money investing in stocks. Now, if on the other hand, you only invested through that November through April months each year, you would have a 9.3% annual return and would have made over $1.8 million in those 62 years. What's even more surprising is that six month investing strategy of holding stocks from November through April would have beaten the buy and hold strategy by more than a percent a year. Now, I'm not actually suggesting that you sell out of all your stocks in May, but I do think you need to shift to the kind of stocks that are gonna protect your money if the stock market wobbles during those summer months. Now, I'll detail those safety stocks in the June plan below, but now I wanna add a few bond funds to the portfolio. Bonds are just debt borrowed by companies with the interest paid twice a year and then the entire loan paid at the end of that investment, usually from five to 30 years. Because it's debt, bond investors get paid before stock investors, so these are the ultimate in safety and, and can really provide some great cash flow as well. Now, instead of trying to pick individual company bonds, which can cost a lot of money in fees and trading, we're just gonna take a simpler approach and just look to invest in bond funds. Now these holds hundreds and even thousands of individual bonds passing the interest on to investors, but they trade just like stocks. For example, a good option is the Vanguard Long-Term Bond Index ETF, that's ticker BLV. This fund holds over 2,000 individual bonds, mostly in US government treasuries, but also in highly rated companies. Now the fund pays a 3.3% dividend yield and has returned almost 7.5% a year since 2007. Another good bond fund is the iShares Core US Aggregate, ticker AGG, or this Vanguard Total Bond Fund, ticker BND, but really here you probably only need maybe one or two bond funds at the most. In June, you'll deposit another $85 into your account and stick with that theme of safety. Here we're gonna be looking at the stock sectors that do well even when the rest of the market wobbles. For example, when the rest of the market fell 50% to March of 2009, stocks in the consumer staples sector, shown here by the Select Sector Spider Fund, that's ticker XLP, they only fell 24% over the same period. The stocks in these safety sectors of the economy, like consumer staples, uh, utilities, telecom, they provide that protection because their sales aren't gonna rise and fall as much in a recession. You know, people need food and electricity whether the economy is doing well or not, so these companies can do really well in any market. Now, just like a lot of the stocks and themes in this video, you can invest broadly in safety stocks with a fund like maybe the consumer staples ETF, that's ticker XLP, or the utilities fund, the ticker XLU, or you can pick individual companies in these sectors. Now, if you are gonna be picking individual stocks, make sure you're comparing things like uh, price to earnings and dividends against similar companies to get that fair measurement. You're not comparing the measures or, or those ratios of utility stocks against tech stocks because the business models are just so much different. 
Always make sure that you're comparing similar companies when you're deciding which stocks to buy. Remember to check out those videos linked in the description below and watch for part two of the video for that July through December plan. Click on the video to the right to see my 443 code to becoming a millionaire. That's four characteristics, four habits you need to become rich, and three business ideas for a seven-figure payday. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.